Hello and welcome to NDA and Hivestack present Out of Home Strategies in an Omnichannel Environment. As we all know, um, Out of Home is kind of changing in front of our face and on a daily basis at the moment, are uh, driven by programmatic, driven by huge global scale and the targeting and measurement capabilities that programmatic media offers is become a different medium. So we're going to find out what's really going on with two experts in this space. Uh, we'll spend about the next 30 to 45 minutes looking at the biggest opportunities, the biggest challenges, and, and what needs to be done for the industry to really deliver on the promise of programmatic out of home. So let's meet our two expert guests. First of all, Lee. Yeah, sure. A pleasure. Um, so, yeah, my name's Lee Cutter. I'm Vice President for Hivesac in UK. I also look after emerging markets as well. I was actually the first person in Hivesac and EMEA, starting in March 2020. Of course, that was a fun time to be in this industry. <laughs> um, but we have, you know, we've had a lot of success along the way. But predominantly before that, I haven't been in ad tech. It's, an, it's kind of like a new venture into it. Uh, I w I'm an out-of-home guy. Uh, you know, the posters are my, have been a lot of my, my industry, uh, about my time in my career. Uh, I began in agencies and then moved into media sales roles. So Metro um, initially, but then into more out-of-home roles uh, about 25 years. Believe okay. it or not, I know I don't look like it, but 25 yeah, years. You look so young. <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant, Perfect. fantastic. Perfect. And I'm Chanel, uh, Commercial and Partnerships Director of Hawk UK and International. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Hawk as a business, we are a cookie-less omni-channel platform. Um, I've been at Hawk now for, gosh, uh, eight years since we launched into the UK market back in 2015, 2016. Uh, my role entails working closely with all of our partners, be that our amazing agency and brand partners that we work with, um, fantastic supply partners such as Hivestack, um, data measurement tech partners to make sure that, you know, they're getting the most out of their working relationship with Hawk, but also to drive innovation through collaboration uh, by bringing new and innovative solutions to the market it via all of the technologies that we work with. Fantastic. And I think innovation through collaboration, that could sort of sum up this market. Absolutely. That's what's going on at the moment. Yep. So let's, let's get into it. Programmatic out of home is changing in front of our eyes. And on the channel, it's become, um, it's become a reality rather than something that was talked about a lot, maybe like five years ago. So let's talk about what programmatic digital out of home can really offer in, you know, offer to an omnichannel Omnichannel buyer, an omnichannel campaign, uh, the consumer at the end of the omnichannel channel work. Yeah, Lee. sure. Yeah, happy to. I mean, I didn't say too much about high stack as a business actually to start with, but we we are uh, the kind of global leader in uh, kind of full stack services for platforms, a so DSP and SSP. So we've got a good view on the whole sector. And I guess the out of home industry as a whole, we kind of looked at the omnichannel party with envious eyes for a number of years. Um, you know, obviously we, we believe we're a kind of four or five percent share of revenue uh, sector, but 20, 25 percent share of day. So digital dollars have always been a big thing for us and trying to move into that space. But I think for us to earn a kind of like, a, a, to, to be a value, valued the guest at the party, we need to do a number of things, um, which I think we've, we've, we've subsequently done. So it's things like supply, which I know we'll get into a bit more detail, um, but there's been so much investment over the, uh, over the infrastructure. Uh, the ecosystem has just thrived because of that. Um, more partners, more screens, just higher quality. Um, more buyers as well, obviously, which is, which is really key, uh, you know, such as Hawk and uh, multiple network agencies, independent agencies, other on the channels as well. So we've, we've created this uh, ecosystem now, which is, which is thriving there. But also I think the, the biggest point is kind of data, I guess, as well. Um, because, you know, data hasn't always been the best in our, in our sector, uh, but certainly that's improved. Uh, what I will say is that even though, you know, Omnichannel is relatively new for, for us, um, kind of the mobile and out-of-home convergence piece has been around for quite a while. You know, obviously there's the geotemporal aspects of that, retargeting uh, mobile device IDs, et cetera. Uh, the mobile power, and we talk about it kind of Omnichannel, um, kind of like marketing through that, and Omnichannel shopping, sorry, uh, virtual store, storefront. So that's been a big thing, and I think we've proved that for, for a, number of, a number of years. But obviously there's so much more we can do, and that's what we're here to, to try and build on. Fantastic. You know, same question to you. You know, what what's programmatic out of home delivering? What additional benefits is delivering from on the channel? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that out of home as we see it, programmatic out of home as we see it, is a fantastic reach driver. Um, so just to give you a quick evolution of of Hawk, so we started as a mobile technology, we stepped into omnichannel uh, in 2017, 2018, when we started opening up supply across audio, across programmatic out of home, across um, in game and across CTV. Um, the digital out of home kind of evolution and um, 
uh, kind of adoption from from agencies really started, as Lee mentioned, after the pandemic in kind of 2021, 2022. Uh, for us since then, it's been that really kind of trusted, premium, uh, reach driving channel, which kind of most media plans really start with at the moment. So when we get a brief from an agency and when we're looking at an omni-channel response, kind of all those channels that I talked about in terms of mobile, audio, et cetera, et cetera, all get tied back to out of home. So how is it help? How is out of home starting that uh, kind of conversation with an audience and how are those other channels tying into it? And I think for us, it's really about how out of home is used to drive that reach to make sure that there's um, scalable solutions across across all of those different channels. Um, recently, however, we have started to see, you know, more and more quality data, more and more quality measurement, which is bringing out of home from being exclusively an upper funnel channel into that mid and even lower funnel that we're seeing now as well. So we're getting lots and lots of briefs from agencies um, saying, look, we want to run a digital out of home campaign, but because of your amazing measurement capabilities that you have across out of home, how can we tie that to performance? Can that be tied to, you know, drive to store activity? Can that can I tie that to my search? And we'll probably come on to this and kind of the work that we're doing with Captify and Samba and others in this space, but we're really kind of decoupling uh, measurement and data from those trusted data sources is twinning it with that really premium reach that we have with Out of Home. And all of a sudden, we have a channel that was formerly only upper funnel, now supporting that mid, mid to lower funnel as well. So lots of use cases for digital Out of Home and lots of ways that it can drive efficiencies across um, all, areas of the, uh, all areas of the media plan. Yeah, I, th- I think historically it's been a case of you can be one or the other. Mm, uh, I absolutely. think we, we love a we love a label in the industry, uh, and you know, out of home is great for brand fame and, and that kind of piece there. But you know, as, as you mentioned there, we are now with, through data being able to move through that, and we can we can be accountable. I think which is uh, which is great and move more to the ad- addressable space. So we are seeing briefs which still want brand fame, they want that kind of awareness, and we mm. can do that in more of an effective way, an efficient way, uh, but also just kind of that that proof and the real kind of business outcomes in the real world. So I think, you know, convergence of that, uh, again, that's that's earning our spot at the table. Definitely. It's amazing how quickly that's changed as well, even in the you know short amount of time that we've been in the programmatic out of home space. Um, the measurement that we were deploying in the early stages of our out of home campaigns to where we are today are kind of poles apart. And that's only in the space of three to four years since we've been operating in that space. So um, rapidly evolving and really exciting to see where that's going to go in the future. So it's good news all around. You sort of can't move the industry press for reports and surveys coming up, proving how much money is being spent in the sector and how much more is to come. So there's obviously excitement and it's obviously working, but what are the biggest challenges for brands that that now have an omnichannel outlook on life and they want to now to include programmatic digital out of home within yeah. it? Well, I think, I think there is uh, often a kind of a drive for, for that one size fits all kind of accountability every element of it must be you know the, the kind of standardization of that of that kind of space so out of home is still learning i think with some certain areas i'm sure we'll come on to some very specifics there but you know the kind of uh, standardization is a big thing we're doing work with the iab with other other areas to try and get that there as well um i think we are a lot of the hurdles we're still having to kind of go over and improve still a little bit in the market with the challenges so we often get asked about scale for example um, you know, in the UK, um, with our, my SSP hat on, we've gone from kind of two partners when we launched to 34 today. So, you know, scale isn't a necessary issue anymore. Um, we've kind of covered a bit of data uh, data there as well. But, you know, data comes in many forms. You know, mobile location data fits a lot of how we, we do audience targeting, but also for triggers and moments, which, again, I think we'll cover later. Um, that's really, really key. So, look, there are going to be challenges still as well. Um, but I do think, you know, the high quality aspect of it, the premium nature of it, those are all the things which I believe, you know, on the channel marketeers want. But, you know, I don't think now, I don't think marketeers exist without being out on the channel marketeers anymore. Likewise, in agencies, you don't get many kind of channel planners anymore. So it is it is all there for the taking. I think, you know, often we're the new kid, so we have to prove ourselves. Um, so I think that's just what we're doing on an ongoing basis. But we feel very well equipped too. It's true, single channel planners, not really a thing anymore. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, same question to you, you know, it, it's obviously working, but how, what, challenges exist for advertisers yeah and i think similar to to what lee was alluding to there it really is probably the standardization the way that we shape the narrative around out of home and how that ties into those other channels as well so we frequently get asked you know what's my unique reach going to be for this out of home campaign um and you know unique reach doesn't really exist across programmatic out of home because it's a one one to many channel and it can't be quantified in the same way um as other channels but because 
that channel is being planned by people who've previously had a programmatic hat on from a digital display perspective. Um, it's just an education piece that we need to, you know, we are going on as a as an industry together. And again, we've moved really far in a short amount of space of time on that. Um, so we're getting to a point where those questions aren't being asked. But again, you know, at the beginning uh, of the journey, um, those were the sorts of questions that we were getting. Yep. Um, standardization in creatives. Um, so we'll often get a suite of assets over from uh, an agency or a brand and they'll say that we want to run these on out of home, but they might not be relevant for the screen that they want to be running on because they're, you know, standard desktop assets or something like that. Um, so it's about how we take those and how we make them more uh, more relevant. But again, I think that that kind of, kind of common denominator across all of those channels is really starting to be seen now. So you can measure across all of the different channels that, w- that we, you know, execute through our platform. You can use the same data segments across all of those different channels. You can use the same location targeting. So the challenges previously have been that, you know, digital out of home exhibits some traits that are quite different to other channels but it's about finding where they tie together and looking for solutions amongst that that's really starting to to drive that forward and really kind of bring out of home into that omni-channel dream so i think if i can just add to that what i find interesting from my own observations is we're fusing two worlds aren't we really Mm. the kind of pragmatic and the traditional out of home world and we've had to like absorb i guess new metrics and new kpis so you know out of home is very much reach and frequency interestingly enough in the programmatic space reach and frequency is not always a metric that's used we're mm. actually building that into our dsp at the moment our ssp so we're doing we're doing all that kind of stuff at the moment ourselves but you know things uh, there are other, other metrics there such as attention which have come to the fore now which are really important ones but you know marketeers are asking for brand safety viewability relevance um and again those are things we've had in our back pocket a little bit with out of home but in a programmatic space, um, we're able to do that more and more. So, you know, brand safety, every, you know, we've got all the kind of like the whitelisted screens and we can have a look at, look at certain sectors and prohibitions, et cetera. But ultimately, the the kind of uh, the creator approval sits with the, uh, the publisher as well. Mm-hmm. So brand safety is paramount. So they know their environments better than anyone. You know, if it's outside of school, if it's, you know, wherever else it is, certain advertisers can't run on it. So I think we've, we've, we've brought that to the table as well. So uh, we've learnt, I guess, and... Uh, Fuse those metrics. So this rapid growth, you're, you're both talking about the need for education, the need for metric standardization, et cetera, has similarities with other channels seeing the same sort of growth like CTV and audio. Are you, are you seeing those similarities? Absolutely, yeah. We would say that out of home audio, CTV, um, exhibit a lot of similar traits in the fact that the way that they're traded, for example, they're not traded in the same way that um, traditional programmatic display and programmatic mobile will have been traded through open exchanges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's very curated premium supply sitting within a few SSPs and a few publishers, um, which make that journey from you know DSP right through to publisher um, a bit more of a shorter one than perhaps that we see on digital display and mobile. Um, again, when you look at CTV, it's a, it's a channel that can be linked to location. Um, so, you know, it's a static screen, very similar to what out of home will exhibit. So looking at kind of high value geos or geos of high intent, for example, um, CTV and digital out of home follow a very similar narrative when it comes to that. Um, and we're seeing more and more demand from agencies and brands, to how they tie together their digital out of home and audio, whether that's through audio retargeting. So looking at people that have been around digital out of home home screen at a certain time and this works for, for mobile as well and that's where mobile and digital out of home work really well together but i think everybody accepts that that's that's the truth when it comes to to mobile and all, uh, mobile and out of yeah, home yeah you always think mobile and out of home first other two yeah think. exactly that tie nicely together but don't discount these other channels they also tie together nicely with out of home as well and they do exhibit a lot of similar traits even though you know audio on the surface there is no visual that goes alongside that whereas digital out of home is a highly visual uh, medium um you can still tie together with creative through the messaging, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, lots of similarities as well as differences and nuances um, that need to be factored into any any plan that an agency or a brand wants to execute. Uh, and that's why hopefully working with experts like mm. both of our businesses helps helps brands to do that. You've seen the same thing, Lee, and I like this idea, especially of the the kind of the synergy of different different platforms like CFP Audio rather than just mobile helping. Yeah, no, I mm. think look, we can't we can't be in a lane. We have to really kind of like reach out and learn we always say lessons from the other side and we speak to colleagues and you know the people we know in other areas but i think the premium nature is a really interesting one because i think in out of home digital on its own has always been just seen as premium it's digital out of home anyway with screens but if you look at how connected tv do that and how they curate deals and how they package we certainly learn from that and again it's working with partners such as hawk 
Um, you know, we can throw that curated deals uh, that we think are going to work, but we work with their clients and kind of like come across ones which we think will, uh, will actually be bought. So, for example, rather than using one publisher who have screens in gyms, we've got, you know, three or four perhaps, and we can, can combine that to make a London gym package. We can also look at, you know, well-being uh, venue types as well and combine that as well. And that was never done out of home before. So we're certainly learning that kind of area. Um, we're still very much in test and learn kind of phase as well. We're doing that. Um, and again, I still think we can learn from from other channels there as well. So there's quite a lot going on. I mean, audio, digital audio, my previous life, I was at Global as well, and we launched DAX when it was an audio exchange. So, you know, I think there's some real synergies there. You're still out of home generally when you're mm -hmm. listening to it. It's quite a personal like, environment and personal, personal relationship with your headphones, um, and then it's public space TV there. But again, you're in a certain modal mindset, and I think it's quite interesting how you can delve into that, look at certain categories, um, and, you know, then they make it even more contextually relevant. So there's lots of learnings to go on, um, and, I, and I think hopefully every side can keep learning from each other. Yeah. The other key thing, sorry, just to, to add to that point from Lee, is that all of those channels that we've talked about are also cookie-less by design, right? Mm -hmm. Very similar to, to out of home. Um, audio has been cookie-less by design. 80% of digital audio streaming pretty much happens on a mobile device, and we know that mobiles are largely speaking cookie-less environments. Um, CTV, there's no, uh, you know, cookies that exist in the CTV landscape either. So actually, if you're looking at the way that data is applied, the way that attribution exists on those channels, you're, you know, speaking the same language pretty much across all of those different channels. Um, and again, that's where Out of Home really exhibits a lot of similarities with those other channels that we mentioned and why it's perfectly and seamlessly fitting into that that omni-channel mix. I think also omni-channel, uh, like we talked about gym packages and sometimes don't realize that out of home screens are in so many different environments you get screens in offices now office blocks and mm -hmm. gyms and stuff so i guess that makes it even more powerful to be part of an online channel campaign online channel view yeah. yeah no i absolutely think so again it's one of those things previously we talked about roadside and, and, and rail transit maybe and then something called premium enclosed environments which was everything else mm -hmm. you know and again we've learned venue types you know and i think when i joined and i looked at our platform it was like What's of any type is it North Americanism, but no, it's something from the digital space. So mm -hmm. we we learn from that. Um, so yeah, there's nuances in each of those. Uh, and again, half of our job is to you know work with Chanel and his team there to kind of like do a little bit of education. You know, again, we work with a lot of different partners there, but there are nuances. There's lots of interesting things you can learn from. Um, it's contextually relevant anyway because you're in that space before you put any more layers on there as well. So again, I think that's a big thing that we've got to play in. Uh, just going back to a quick point you said as well with the, the cookie lists. I know you can't have a podcast without talking about the cookie. <laughs> it, no, we got this uh, it's illegal. 16 did, minutes yeah, in. I, I think that's a record. Um, but we always have a bit of a wry smile because, you know, in Out of Home, there's never really been that digital journey anyway, historically. So you don't actually have that in play anyway. So we're always like, actually, contextual relevance is, is what we do. So, you know, I think naturally we're well placed anyway before kind of programmatic brought everything else into the, into the mix also. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of, I think we're sitting quite, quite, quite smartly here. Yeah. Definitely. And Justin, to your point around kind of, um, you know, the ubiquity really of, of um, out of home screens, there's a lot more environments that, you know, we didn't know before we entered this space bet, that, that you bet. can you can serve into, right? I was in Chicago recently, got into a taxi and there was a, uh, you know, a screen in the headrest of the, of the yeah. person in front of me. Um, that's an out of home screen that we can tap into in North America. And we don't have that in the UK, but it's only when you go abroad and you start looking at the global opportunities that exist in the way that America doing things. You know, APAC is a very, very strong out of home market as well. I'm sure they're doing things that we're not doing over here. Um, all environments that we can learn from and no doubt out will be part of the UK ecosystem in, in no time. Well, I'm pleased to say, Chanel, we do have uh, taxis as of any type now. So there we've we got go. a new, there a new entrant there that have uh, screens on the, on the in top. In the UK? Yeah, in the top. Drovo. Oh, yeah. really? So, so that's market. a really, really new entrant to the market. So, yeah. look, I mean, it's, it's almost like we planned that. It's yeah. brilliant. Almost. We didn't. <laughs> but it, 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 it is fresh. They're coming all the time. Yeah. I mean, I was speaking to guys mm. the other day. They've got um, screens in golf, uh, golf, golf courses, golf mm. driving ranges. You know, a really clear audience there. So they're, they're coming through all the, all the time. So, yeah, it's... Um, uh, it just it's just perfect for certain clients. Well, I think look, the other thing that sort of dominates the interview discussions is attention. Yep. It's come to the fore, and actually now we can prove it and prove it works, and it's not the nebulous thing it once was. And I guess in this environment, there's nothing more, nothing better for attention than sort of digital out of home, programmatically. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Is that a conversation helping? I think attention is obviously one of those new metrics we're kind of adapting, but I always think without of home, it generally does gain attention just by its by its nature. 
Um, but I think creativity as a whole, anyway, is one of those things now of home that can be done very badly, can be done very well. And I think, you know, it's almost like, you know, you need to go back to basics sometimes with it. And, and, when we, and I think what a key point for this is we are bringing new advertisers, new buyers, and, and new creative agencies even into the space. So sometimes we just need to remind what makes a good poster using you know, terminology, digital screen. Um, and it's no no kind of like uh, if you think about how a, how a mobile screen is, it's a D six, it's a portrait mm -hmm. screen. A Likewise, D6, yeah. kind of a D forty eight is a landscape for a, for a kind of like a, a desktop ad or mobile ad, um, uh, an online ad. So so there there are kind of like basic things to remember there. And I think creativity always is evolving. So we did our first, the, the world's first anamorphic. Uh, Copper uh, delivery of on programmatic as well. So you know, I know it's a bit stunty when it gets like that. It's not true programmatic, but again, we're just evolving that um, and, and look at new environments, new new ways of doing it to, to make that kind of three D effect work. So I'm not saying for attention you need to be and that's you need to do that anything as special as that, but I do think out of home works very well from a, from a attention perspective. Mm. Yeah, totally agree with that. Obviously, the screen itself lends itself to being a really highly attentive. Uh, attentive medium um similar to lee we're doing some brilliant stuff in the in the creative space as well we have a creative studio at hawk that helps brands to execute really effective campaigns and really effective creatives um across all of the environments that we offer so all of the different channels but out of home obviously being one of one of those key ones um when it comes to attention itself we're actually building uh, an attention product with jc deco at the moment which is really really interesting um it basically uses their visual impact uh, impact measurement tool that they have to predict attention on an ad before it goes live so that we can optimize creatives to driving the highest levels of engagement and attention through heat mapping etc cetera, etc cetera. so really interesting project that we're working on there and something that we'll be able to kind of bring to market and, and talk to brands a little bit more about in the coming weeks and months and some brands are already using this um at the moment but yeah attention is a huge yeah. uh huge buzzword um a huge thing that we're looking to to drive through these through these ads and again something that you know lee's mentioned there it kind of ties into the way that we still build mobile ads, right? And it's really easy to complement what we do on mobile with the out-of-home assets, but there's also nuances between that as well. Um, I think one thing to note is that, you know, it's probably one of those channels or one of the, the few channels that we've talked about previously um, where the user isn't directly in front of it all the time. You have to remember that they're maybe walking past it, right? So how are you going to grab attention as someone's walking past the ad? It's not like a mobile ad where it's directly in front of you, a CTV ad where it's directly in front of you and you're consuming it kind of face on. Um, so these are all the things that marketers and marketeers need to consider, but something that, you know, through our creative studio and through learning and testing, um, something that we're definitely getting better and better at and something that will drive attention moving forwards. It's just really refreshing to hear you, uh, the Hawk are investing in that kind of studio. Yeah. Because, you know, you can have the best ad campaign in the world, the best setup in platform, and then if the creative isn't there, it can really fall down and kind of metrics will, 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 yeah. will not report back. So I think you guys putting that in, because creative is, like we, we often see a, a, st a TV still used in an out-of-home model, yeah. or worse, still a, a press ad with so much copy when really you should have six to eight words you know so yeah. that kind of that kind of uh, resource and uh, investment is really good to hear definitely it's been a huge part of our ethos since day one so we've had that creative studio in yeah. in the uk since 2015 um six designers in in the uk and we always thought and we continue to think uh that a, a lot of the times programmatic targeting or clever targeting is quite separate from creativity and programmatic in its old sense, was all about right person, right time, cost efficiencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the conversation around creative really wasn't being had. And that's why we built the studio in the UK to marry up that clever targeting with clever creatives. Because at the end of the day, as an industry, we talk about this stuff every single day. But when I'm walking down the street, what do I look for? I look for a clever creative. I don't look for clever targeting. Um, that's almost a byproduct of, of you know, something that shouldn't be seen. So, um, yeah, that's been a huge part of our ethos since day one and, and a key reason as to why adoption of Out of Home has kind of exponentially grown through our platform as well. Um, when we first launched into the Out of Home space, uh, a lot of the advertisers and brands that we were working with were saying, look, we really want to run Out of Home. We really want to step into this space, but we don't have the budget to be able to build creative. Um, and again, it's just helping brands, eliminating those hurdles, yep. increasing that adoption. And it's something that we feel that we offer that's that's very unique to our platform. What's happening with Dynamic Creative? I mean, it's sort mm. of the opposite of that press ad shoved in the building. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, I think it's, it's a huge part of, of the sun and the opportunity as well. 
Uh, and in truth, I don't think we've done it as well as we could have done as an industry, as a sector. Um, but it's certainly something we're putting a lot of investment into. Um, there are nuances, again, there always are. But, you know, every kind of media owner operates in a slightly different way or every SSP does. Uh, but DCO, I mean, absolutely, we talk about contextual relevance. That is one of the two clear routes that we talk about for that. So, look, we've run some great campaigns. Um, I think we, we would like to do a, an awful lot more. I think with that, we've only really scratched the surface. So it gets quite techy and quite geeky, which takes me out of my lane a little bit um, <laughs> as a commercial kind of guy. But um, but yeah, look, it, it's, it's a real work in progress there. But I think from a DCO angle, we also talk about moments as well, which I think is a good part to talk about that. So, you know, we say you can either change, you can run an ad and change the creative depending on where it runs. So we've done ads for M&S and it tells you where the store is, for example. That's great. Or you can do it based on an external influence factor, whatever it might be. So historically, weather, you know, we've we've done that to death. And I think, as an, I always say, as an out of, home, out of home industry, we've dined off that way too long. That has know. been talked about. We have, long, we have. We're time. not winning can lines for that anymore. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it, it is, look, look, the weather is important for business. You know, the temperature yeah. goes up a degree, things change, likewise go down. But, you know, what we're talking about doing now is, is really innovative. So if you allow me just a couple of examples. So Crystal Ski, for example, did an exa- did did this kind of weather targeting, but it was destination weather. So they wanted us to talk about talk to people in London, uh, you know, in Soho, when it's really, really kind of like no, not necessarily a nice day here, but it's snowing in the Alps. So you go, you're you thinking about actually, I need to put that ski holiday. So it's quite, it sounds simple, but it's actually quite tricky to do the moment somewhere else mm. and, then, and then trigger that there. So that's a really nice one. We've also done one for, uh, for Brewdog as well, which is really, really innovative. They had a product called Hazy Jane, which was one of their beers, and they wanted to only be active when it was hazy. So you created a completely bespoke uh, moment based on that. Uh, and that was like, you know, when the sky, the air pollution and quality and all this kind of stuff and wind. So um, very, very bespoke. But there's so much more we can do here. So, you know, DCO and the, uh, I guess, moments, we, we, we call it just simply that now. Um, we've only scratched the surface of that. But, you know, if you think about the power of, you know, the World Cup's cut over the Euros next year, England scoring a goal, and you only that moment across the UK, so contextually relevant, so powerful. And Hazy Jane is one of my favourite ales. My fridge is full of it, by the way. <laughs> it's better than every. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the uh, sort of challenges of what's going on in the measurement of, of effective campaigns. You're all talking about this amazing technology, making campaigns more effective, making campaigns better, better creative, but what's going mm. on with measurement? Yeah, we like to think that we've been at the kind of forefront of measurement for, for quite a while now across all of the channels that we offer, but especially across out of home. Um, through Hawk, we have, you know, cookie, a cookie list uh, omni-channel suite, uh, cookie list measurement suite that we can measure lots of different attributes through. Um, so real-time footfall, obviously, you know, you can do that on, on out of home and we can do that in real time through our platform. Uh, Brand Lift, um, we're working really closely with the likes of new partners, so Captify being one of them, Samba being another one. Um, but that Captify partnership allows us to look at um, the effects of out of home and what's that, what that's doing on search. Um, and that's really, really interesting because mm. I think there's been a long-standing narrative in the industry around wanting to prove the uh, prove the kind of tie between out of home and search, and that's what we're really trying to do at the moment. Um, we ran our first campaign using that search uplift at the beginning of this year. Uh, it was for a major global sports brand. We managed to take their share of search in exposed geos from three percent right up to twenty-one percent versus competitors. So that's that's walking past a billboard and search on your phone for something. Yeah, search organic phone. searches. Wow. Yeah, okay. organic searches. And I think that's a really true indicator of intent because it's not something where you're exposing someone yes. to a brand lift and saying, have you heard of this brand? Have you seen this brand? It's about monitoring the searches in those areas and what they're doing on an ongoing basis. That's where the power of data really comes through. I think my, own, my own experience, I walk up the escalators and the circus, I'll often top the stairs then get my phone yeah. and yeah. find something out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. And I think that measurement is, is absolutely there across out of home. I think previously yeah. when we entered the space there's a lot of question marks about how you measure out of home, um, how you measure the efficacy of what we're doing across all the different channels. But I think that as an industry, we're in a really, really strong position now to be able to look at various different metrics and what out of home is doing and also how all those different channels are tying together to be able to drive the same outcome. And ultimately, that that is the omni-channel dream, isn't it? Looking at what your mobile is doing, what your out of home is doing, what your audio is doing. Not to say that one channel is better than the other because every channel is different and is used for different things. Um, but just to be able to quantify exactly, you know, and rationalise why they're on the plan together and what they can do together. Um, and that's the, that's a huge part of the work that we're doing at Hawk at the moment. 
the omnichannel dream is a beautiful phrase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that, that, is that, that I dream about every night. Say that. <laughs> but I think what, a point to, to say that I guess it's, it's a classic case of rising tide floats the boats because I think the more of uh, the more partners doing this in this space, the better, right? Mm. Um, and you're right, it was a hurdle initially because you know they could, that that kind of a, a cause and effect wasn't always there. But you're right, our bread and butter has been brand lift. Mm. Uh, it's been footfall. You know, if you've got a, a point of a, a POI, you're trying to drive people to. Uh, like we did a campaign for New Look, and literally it was you know it's quite a sizable national campaign trying to drive in store. And obviously we could we could do a custom audience because we could look at which devices were observed in New Look, which devices were observed in their competitors, and then basically we through through again using mobile device uh, devices, you can see when were they latterly observed in a store, um, and the, the kind of figures on that were great. I mean it was between a sixty three and seventy three percent uplift depending on which metric you looked at. Um, you know, and it's great. And you have a control and expose sample, so you know we can we can um, share the methodology and all that. So that that's a really great one. The thing I'd really like to get into, uh, and it, it takes brave clients to do this, is more of the first party data stuff. So yes, you know, EPOS data. You know, we mm -hmm. talked about that forever, but you know, app uploads as well. So you know, all that downloads even. Sorry, um, that's the kind of thing we'd love to get because we do we do get campaigns for that. You know, you can have your Ubers and door drops in Canada are a big campaign now. But you know, unless you get the data from the client, it's difficult to prove that. Yeah. Um, and I love the kind of stuff you're talking about with with um, kind of search. So you know, at the moment we we don't have that product as such. But what we do do is we can do a moment based on search. So it can be social sentiment. So if a certain part of London are talking positively about mm. going on going to you know a certain part of the world, we can serve ads to that part there. So you know, that's a slightly different way. It's not measuring it, but it's certainly taking that data. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get involved in more of the kind of measurement piece for sure. But, but we definitely moved it forward significantly. Yeah. And it's really exciting to see where that space is going to go, as we've kind of alluded to throughout the course of this, you know, we're a very short while into this long journey, right? And we've moved a very, very long way in a short space of time. And we're seeing more and more measurement coming into the ecosystem. We're certainly not at an end game. There's lots that I'm um, no doubt both businesses are working on yeah. to really push that measurement space forward. And that's why it's super, super exciting to see where it's going and to speed go. Speed development in this is set. Oh, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like we, we talked about, I mean, you mentioned there briefly, but visualization, again, it's something which, you know, out of home, very visual, but the platforms exist, whether it's Hawk or ourselves or other others, you have visualization of, of, of people, of audiences moving around, and also right through to our measurement. You know, our, mm. our kind of measurement dashboards are within platform. You're not getting a 70 page PowerPoint kind of like a you know, dipstick or whatever. You're getting you're getting that dynamically. So again, yeah. I think that evolves it, that brings it more into a programmatic space as well. So I think little things like that really help. Yeah, the real time element of it is absolutely crucial, yeah. right? You know, yeah. footfall studies have existed mm. for for quite a while now, but traditionally they've been delivered, you know, after a campaign. And that's great to know. Uh, and that's a good starting point. But if you can start to optimize it in flight and start in to flight. move budget across different channels, move budget across different suppliers, look at what's driving efficacy of the plan. And that's where marketers' budgets can really, really start to stretch. We can really be really efficient, especially in these hard economic times. You know, it's more and more important that we are able to justify the inclusion of these uh, different strategies and, and different channels on plans. And no doubt that's something that brands absolutely want to see to make sure their marketing budgets are working as, as hard as they can. Let's talk. One, one thing we haven't talked about much is um, the media owner side. And I would say most media owners are pretty advanced in this space. Some mm. on others, but the, the speed of change there is also frenetic. So, yeah. what 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 does programmatic digital out of home? offer them what's the biggest opportunity for media readiness yeah well i think i think digital dollars if you speak to them from a commercial point of view is is a big one there as well but also i just think being more um, efficient efficient with how they're selling so we we have within our ssp we've got various tools so yield optimization for example we, we offer that through through kind of header bidders and ad servers as well so we we can be make sure that you know that they are if they're operating with multiple ssps they are getting the highest price unified auction all this kind of stuff which will come down the line so we're, we're commercially certainly making their lives easier and hopefully making them more money. That's what we're there to do, right? And because you're not buying a loop anymore, um, you know, out of home traditionally, believe it or not, was one in six and it just runs out no matter what time of day it's running there. You, you can be a bit dyna dynamic, but here with that, so therefore you're, you're eliminating a lot of wastage and you're, you know, over a, over a course of a, um, a universe of a point of time, there are impressions in there that you're just picking up. You know, you're not necessarily going, I need to bet one in six. It might be three and three and five. Another time it might be one in a hundred. But when that exact time, that impression is right, you're, you're serving that. So you're being efficient and also you're eliminating that wastage as well. So that's a key one from a commercial and then operationally as well. I think we're just trying to make their lives easier. You know, initially you do come in and, you know, we have conversations with media owners and sometimes it's like, wow, this is this sounds a bit too complicated. So there's a lot of hand holding, but that happens both sides, supply and demand there. 
Um, but I think operationally, we're hoping to make lives easier, and then you know, commercially, obviously, improve yields and, and bring more new money in. Mm. I think the new money point is a is a really important one. It's probably access to advertisers that may not have considered out of home previously that might be working with technologies like ours, you know, executing mobile campaigns um, that then go, oh, okay, cool, we can we're working with your mobile. Let's activate some out of home around this as well. And previously, that might have been something that they didn't consider because of you know the restrictions or limitations or cost or you know having to book a certain amount of time in advance those hurdles are being eliminated and ultimately for the media owners themselves, there might be new advertisers that are picking up alongside, you know, the yield management and everything that Lee's just talked about there, access to brands that maybe wouldn't have considered out of home previously. Yeah, and we also talked about deals as well, actually, sorry, just to just jump in there, but we talk about always on deals as well to make lives easier and it's something which we're, again, it's lessons from the other side, mm. always on deals, curated deals, other ways to make money there. But also one, a big one that I've, I didn't mention there as well is, is global. So we talk about, you know, I've talked about UK supply here as well, but another great example i can share from hawk as well is that you know it's we, we talk about outside in buys it's international buys essentially but you know we now we're now active in high stack in 35 markets globally uh, and all you really need is you, you you're a partner of ours you just sign a new bit of paperwork to get you in different currency and you and you open up the world effectively so you know during lockdown we had a partner in stratford activated a campaign for a luxury advertiser, a significant campaign over five countries and three continents. Wow. Okay. Just themselves doing that. <laughs> wow. uh, and Chanel, one of the, your team, obviously, were in, in Japan for, what, three words? Yep. Yep. Um, you know, and it's not easy to navigate a market like Japan. You know, it really is very, very different. Um, and we were able to help with that. And what three words were able to be active here, uh, delivered photography, all sorts of stuff. So, you know, it does open up new, uh, new media owners, not just UK ones, but, mm -hmm. you know, and also outside of money into the UK for those media owners. Yeah. So it's just you can have the best sales. I mean, I've worked in sales in out of home for years. You can have the best sales team in the world, but the likelihood you, you're not repping a, a kind of uh, you know a Turkish DSP. You probably yeah. aren't, you know, or, or, you know in boutique digital agencies. So more new revenue comes from different sources. So what would you like to see when it comes to media owners? You know, what's missing? What aren't they doing? What's, what's oh needed? gosh. Um... <laughs> I'd probably focus on the things that they are doing really well. And I think that um, from an out-of-home perspective, one thing that I've noticed and we as a business have noticed since we stepped into the out-of-home uh, out home world is that it's an incredibly collaborative uh, mm. ecosystem. So, um, you know, the media owners work really closely with the SSPs, the media owners work really closely with us. So we have a great relationship with our media owner partners that we work with. We're always looking for new solutions and building new solutions together. Um, SSPs and DSPs working really, really nice together to collaborate and to bring new innovations to market um you know other data providers that we're working with decoupling their data and pushing it into our platform and allowing us to use that across different channels out of home you know being one of the core ones because they themselves don't have the appetite to step into that space you know it takes a lot of money and a lot of dev work to be able to step into the out of home ecosystem so for us, it's been a really pos positive story. I don't think there's something, anything that we'd necessarily change. More programmatic inventory <laughs> would be great. Yeah, yeah, well, um, yeah, releasing yeah. more to, to programmatic would be amazing. Um, there's definitely the demand there to be able to do it. You know, we are constantly being asked by, you know, our advertiser partners, can we get more of this in this area? Can we get more of this in airports? You know, there's really premium, uh, premium locations that they want to be tapping into. But one thing that we've definitely noticed is that collaboration since we've entered the marketplace. So I think it's really, really positive. Yeah, good to hear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think I think I'd say two things. It's tweaks. I mean, there are there are tweaks there because again, this is still quite new to to a lot of teams. There, you know, I think having different skill sets coming in is really important. Having dedicated resource to programmatic helps from from a from a media owner point of view. So I think. Little tweaks there, DCO elements there, and, and just kind of processes. But I think the big one's sustainability, really, because that's mm. a really key one. Because yes. that one's coming up an awful lot, rightly so, um, in this day and age as well. But I think out of home actually is leading the charge in this in this space, um, and we haven't always shouted about it. No. So, so what, why do you say you're leading the charge? Well, what, I mean, things like there was a PwC report which is, which is just fresh out without Smart actually, where you I think it's just under half of all money that comes into out of home is reinvested into the public infrastructure. Mm. You know, it's, it's media for good. We will talk about that. Yes, so it could be anything from defibrillators in, in, in screens there. It could be um, obviously for, for classic out of home for printing on recyclable materials um, using uh, green energy. Um, there's even what media owners are now actually 
uh, installing a kind of air quality or air kind of purification above the screen, so in that direct vicinity. Oh, really, I didn't. Know yeah, that. there's there's all sorts of bits and pieces going on, and and also just like you know supporting local charities and businesses with ads and free ads. So there is a lot going on there, and also I think when you look at carbon footprint emissions, you know don't forget digital out of home is one to many. You know it's not one person on a mobile. You know for, mm. for example, so it's not as bad as yes they are. You know, beautiful screens. They do need power, but they are. You know, you're getting a lot of impressions for for that one kind of like one screen. Definitely, I think one thing that I'd probably revisit in terms of what we can do to push forward from a media owner SSP and DSP perspective. So all all parties within that chain uh, is probably the verification conversation. Um, something that I know that doesn't that's... come up that often in these discussions. Really, no, yeah, yeah, it's not a particularly <laughs> sexy topic, is it? Verification, but uh, yeah, something that you know we get asked from our agency partners and advertiser partners, and that's because they're used to being able to verify across. Yeah, you it's know, a massive, massive subject online. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like third-party tags and just making sure that things are playing out where and when they're meant to be playing out. Um, it's something that we get through SSP reports, so it's yeah. already available. Um, but having third-party verification, no doubt, will be the next step evolution of what we see coming into that space. And I know that, you know, media owners, SSPs are working really, really hard on that. Um, but that's definitely something that we're keen to support from our side as so well. So there's demand for that. Yeah, that. absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, on an omni-channel media plan, you know, we're, we're third-party tracking audio, we're third-party tracking mobile display, we're third-party tracking video, we're third-party tracking CTV. Um, so when it's almost just part of the rhetoric that when yep. you're getting sent tags, it's like, oh, what, what tags <laughs> do I give you for digital out of home? Or yeah. how do I verify my out of home? And, you know, we have the answer to that. We can get that through the playout reports, yep. we can get that through the DSP reports, we can get that from the media owners themselves. So there's lots of different ways that we can do it. Um, it's just, you know, being able to have that, you know, coming over to us at the same time as everything else would probably help to uh, increase confidence even further uh, in the out-of-home space. I, th I think it's, it, without question, I think for, if we want standardisation and we want to be viewed on the same level, it's one of those, it's, it's on our to-do list, you know, it's been there for a while. And I think we're still working through, you know, there are multiple vendors, you know, which one, you know, demand side and supply side, where's it going to sit? So it's, yeah. it's absolutely being worked on. It's one of those to watch, I think, this space, watch this space. Coming soon. Coming soon, <laughs> yes. So look, we've covered a lot of ground uh, and the passion for the sector is obvious from both of you. But I'm going to end by asking you one question and it's tough because it's one thing. I want to hear the one thing in this space you're most excited about. Look, we're coming towards the end of the year, maybe for next year. It could be a technology, an initiative, or whatever, but... Let's start with you, Chanel. The one thing you're excited about. Um, I'm going to break the rules slightly can't here break the and rules. give you two, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, just I can't, I can't separate them both. Um, for us, it's enhanced data, enhanced measurement. Um, and that's what we've really been working on over the last couple of years. So looking at best in class, best quality data that we can continue to drive forward and increase efficiency on, you know, the application of data to our campaigns. Um, and how do we measure in new innovative ways that tie together with other channels? Um, so there's lots in the space that excites me, you know, sustainability. We're talking about some really, really powerful topics here. Um, but from an application and from an activation standpoint, data measurement really really key to what we want to do moving forward and that's what i'm really excited about next year great answer if you broke the rules of that i was going to break it and do power three but i would say i would say i would like the i, would, I just think the how can i work this work to one i think the the uh the ecosystem needs to be used more efficiently and effectively and widespread so what i mean by that look moments i talked about moments i'm passionate about those anyone who listens to this and, and wants to talk please do but we've only scratched the surface of that there's so much we can do um you know having those always on deals triggering when certain things happen Absolutely possible, but but also I think just the the I think if you look at channel DSPs, that's grown since the pandemic hugely. I think on the channel now, it's the time to thrive, and that with it, with that involves outside in buys, not just domestic buys. So you know it's such a it's in such rude health and a real fertile area for for everything. So ready to grow, amazing. Well, yeah. I I've took, taken from this, really, it's, I mean, it's a medium that's having its time in the sun. It's a medium that also you, is sometimes hard to get your head around. I think mm. we were talking, talking about the channel journey and how different screens in gyms, etc. That's something that I wouldn't often think about. Mm. So it's a medium with incredible potential. So I'd like to say thank you so much, my amazing guests, Welcome. Lee and Chanel. And that much. was NDA in association with Hivestack as home strategy within an omnichannel environment. I've been Justin Pierce, the editor of NDA. Thank you so much for listening.